we are joined from Hong Kong by Bruce Pang. Bruce is the head of macro and strategy research at China Renaissance Security. Welcome to the program. Thanks, Bruce, for taking some time to chat with us. I want to begin by looking at overall reaction to both the producer and consumer price inflation. Inflation still high, nine plus percent, but down from previous months. Your thoughts on this? Uh, yes, we think the base gauges were below market forecast and leaving more room for China's Fed air policy spare and easing. The latest inflation data shows both the easing supply side constraints and the weak demand side with a moderating price trend. Actually, uh, it raised concerns from some investors on potential disinflation against the backdrop of the mountain head winds on economic growth in China. I so see, in part, weak demand, but producer prices remain 9% higher, but consumer prices are only up about 1%. So how and why this disconnect? And are consumer prices not growing at the rate of producer prices? Yeah, the uh, path through of high PPI to CPI remains limited, uh, giving a sluggish consumption recovery and a negative output gap in China. So we expect China's CPI inflation to continue to ease in the next several months as food prices weaken and to gradually increase in the second half of this year. But we think CPI inflation to remain far below 3%, the inflation target set by Beijing in the past several years, mm -hmm. and the core CPI will likely stay muted and below 1.5%. You know, what you're saying certainly uh, jives with so many other uh, economists out there who believe that inflation, not only in China but other places, uh, will continue to come down. But with the rate of growth among producer prices down slightly, what impact, if any, will that have on inflation globally? Uh, we think Beijing invented into a set up a produ uh, production and control prices of key commodities and electricity. So we think China's PPI inflation will continue to soften in the rest of this year, as suggested by several leading indicators, such as like PMI readings, as well as uh, growth of M1 suppliers, as well as China's export. That said, oil prices remain the largest uncertainty and a near-term sub risk to watch. So uh, we think a moderating PPI inflation in China actually helped to ease pressure on manufacturers to pass on higher costs to Chinese consumers and exported goods, which would help the global inflation to be manageable amidst COVID uncertainties. Well, that's certainly good news for the consumers. One really negative drawback, COVID continues to uh, be uh, uh, the pandemic that it is around the world. But a couple of very positives in China, Spring Festival and the Olympics playing on the economy and Chinese inflation. Kind of compare and contrast how COVID is sort of taking a bite out of things and is China seeing a bump in its economy because of Spring Festival as well as the Olympic Games? Uh, we think that COVID and the Olympic do, does not uh, do much to food inflation, but the Chinese New Year holidays, as usual, lead to a seasonal spike in demand. For example, the service inflation accelerated in January on the back of seasonal effect in the uh, holiday. The food prices increased sequentially 0.4% uh, in month on month due to the seasonal higher demand before the Chinese New Year. But the uncertainties posed by the more contingent COVID-19 variants and sporadic resurgence of new cases is actually uh, flying up the cross in China could continue to be a drag on the revival of consumer spending, although the situation in China remains relatively under control mm -hmm. as compared with other large economies. Yeah, it certainly is, and that's a very good point. And we know that President Xi, about a month ago, uh, urged the United States to be careful the way its central bank is going to uh, pump up interest rates as well, worried that it could have a drag on the global economy. Is that weighing on Asia right now? Uh, inflation is a global worry, but maybe not for China, at least for now. In China, the current COVID uh, inflation level is far lower and more likely to be temporary and priced in by investors. So we can see that China's headline CPI inflation is still lagging far behind the levels of Western countries, provided Beijing with more leverage to shore up a slowing economy. So we think the slow inflation in recent months actually can help Beijing's monetary policy to remain supportive and accommodative together with a more proactive physical policy. So we expect to see a policy split between China and other major economies. Bruce, thanks very much for your insight. Bruce Pang, head of macro and strategy of China Renaissance Security. Again, thank you for taking time.